meet the guy. He's got some weird little thing up his sleeve. So I, the host, the man, the myth, the legend, we all need to get on our freaking feet for this individual. We got Mr. Travis Brady. Let's go. Go ahead and have a seat, guys. I'm super blessed to have you guys here today. Turn to your neighbor and say, welcome to Brand X. Yeah, this is going to be an experience. Can we give it up for Sam Tagger? He's committed to getting you to have a really awesome experience. And I love how he just doesn't give in, too. Bobby? I'm glad you called Bobby, too. I'm really glad you called Bobby. Get him out of his tongue. Well, I'm really excited that you're here. This is going to be an experience. And I think over the course of the eight years, our goal as an agency was to provide the best business experiences in the world. I don't think we're there yet, but I definitely believe that we're on our way. And if you showed up today, you're in one of these three categories. One, you're looking for brand expansion. You've made the money, okay? You've made millions. Now that next phase of your life is what's going to bring me more meaning? What's going to bring me more influence? Okay, some of you have broken the six figures, okay? Maybe around the half million, and now you're looking to evolve. What's that next stage of my business? What needs to change? The dinosaurs died because they didn't evolve, okay? Some of you have gotten to a really, really comfortable place in your business because now you don't have the fear of not having to worry about money anymore, okay? And that's a really dangerous spot to be in your business. And then others have come to this event, and you're just looking for, what is that business? What is that brand? Where do I need to go? And some of you are really excited, and I can tell leading up to this event how excited you were. Some of you are really open, okay? Your heart's open, your spirit's open, your mind's open, okay? And some of you are like, what the fuck am I doing here? Is NSYNC going to come out next? And whether you're a skeptic, whether you're excited, whether you're still tired, where you're at right now is perfect. How you're feeling right now is absolutely perfect. Okay, and I'll talk about why that's perfect here in just a second. Because we came here for Brand X. You are your Brand X factor. Okay, and your brand has a feeling. And more so than ever before in this world is your information more useless than ever before. Do you guys agree? Yeah, chat GPT just put your knowledge to fucking shit overnight. Yeah. Okay, it really did. Your brand has to bring out this feeling into your customer, and it has to be able to go from one person to the next to the next, and more powerful that emotion, okay, the more powerful it's going to translate. And so why I said earlier where you're at is perfect is because we live in this society where our emotions are not okay and we look past them. Your emotions are a lot, have a lot of answers within them. And if you started to look, well, why are you skeptic right now? Maybe you've been burned before. Maybe things haven't worked out the way you wanted. 
Okay, maybe you've been to another event. If you're excited, why are you excited? Okay, if you're sad, why are you sad? These emotions and these feelings have gold within them. And so the goal of this experience, okay, is to bring up all these feelings. And you might be mad. You might be mad that Sam called me out and he said that because I don't participate and I'm not doing my business, and maybe that was the fucking truth. And then maybe he said something earlier, and that's really hilarious, when Dan Clark just made fun of his man bun, right? And so the goal of this is to go through all these different feelings. And as we go through all these different things, we're going to look at them and go, why is this coming up for me? Why, why am I feeling this right now? And I promise you, if you lean into that emotion, if you lean into the feeling, there's a lot there. Okay? So it turns to your neighbor right now and says, you're going to feel a lot of stuff right now. Yeah, you're going to feel a lot of stuff. <laughs> you're going to feel a lot of stuff. And if you, you know, a lot of people, you know, they came to this event, and maybe you started with branding where I was at. When I first came into the business world, I was like, branding's fake, that's cheesy, it's stupid. If you're good at what you do, people are just going to hire you. How many people have thought that before? Okay, if you're good at what you do, people are just going to hire you. So I obsessed in education. I obsessed in learning about becoming a better fitness coach, a better life coach. And I became more and more frustrated the more I see these other people that have less education, less knowledge. And overall, what I believe, they just weren't quite as good as I am, but they're making more money. Okay, they're on the news. They're getting asked to speak. And it, yeah, I started to get really frustrated. Like, why are these guys winning and why am I losing over here? My first four years in business, I made a total of $75,000. Total. Do you know how many days and nights I've cried? Do you know how many times of frustrating and upset? And as I started to really go along this journey, I think maybe there's something that I'm missing here. Maybe that I do have what it takes to be successful, but maybe the way I'm framing it isn't showing people that. Maybe the way I'm talking about it isn't like connecting with people. How many people have ever left the sales conversation go, they just don't understand, they just don't get it. Raise your hand. They go out and hire a customer. They don't get it, they don't understand. That's a branding problem, guys. And so as I started to get more into the branding, okay, I started to make more money. I started to feel more fulfilled. I started to get asked to speak on more stages, okay? And as I started to do it more, honestly, it just made me a better person because I started to align with who I was and my values with my business, and it just felt good. Sometimes when we don't put ourselves out there, it's because we're not really in line with what we're doing. Confidence is really simple, okay? Everyone wants to be more confident. Confident is doing the shit you tell other people to do that you know to be true, there's confidence. If you're not feeling confident right now, you're not doing the shit that you tell other people they should be doing that you're not currently doing at this moment in time. Don't, overcomp don't overcomplicate confidence. It's very simple. And so going from fitness coaching, I got asked to, I got asked from a lot of trainers and coaches to help them. And so I naturally started to go that road. And it took me a really long time, about eight years, to step into this place of, I'm the branding coach. Yeah. Oh, I finally said it. I'm the branding coach. It took me a long time to get there. Because I wanted to feel confident in the direction that I gave people to go, do this, don't do that. Here's what you need to do a business. Here's what marketing. And I had these incredible highs. People be like, Travis, because of you, I was able to get that new client. Travis, because of you, I put together this event and I'd have these incre incredible highs. But along with that, I experienced these incredible lows. And if you're a coach in the room right now, I have probably the biggest piece of advice that I can give you. Okay, and as I experienced these lows, what I realized is that I was leading from the front. I was telling them what to do, and all their decision making came from my point, not their point. And what I've come to find out over time is coaching is not leading from the front. Okay, I'm not a branding coach. 
That's not who I am. I'm really what I am is I'm a branding mentor. I walk beside of them. I help them make the decisions that they need to make. Okay, and that felt so much better. Okay, I didn't experience these quite lows. I didn't get ostracized when people weren't successful because if you're the reason, if you're the coach and you're the reason for people's success, you could also be the reason for people's failure. And I didn't want to be the escape goat for either. I didn't want to be the reason for their success and I definitely didn't want to be the reason for their failure. And so becoming a branding mentor felt so much better. Who's ever read The Alchemist? Raise your hand. Where's my mic runners? Raise your hand. Where's my mic runners? Mic runners. Okay. So who wants to share what they learned during The Alchemist? Raise your hand. Who wants to share what they learned? Right up here. Can we get a microphone right up here? So tell us, so tell us what you learned during The Alchemist. So the alchemist... Yep, click it up. <laughs> Can we get another mic, please? Run it over here, please. Too sexy for the mic. <laughs> Just yell. Test, test one. Okay. So the alchemist was the actual first book that made me fall in love with personal development. Because it helped me to understand three things. First, it helped me to understand that the magic was inside of me, and I was looking for it outside. It helped me to understand that I need to stop depending on other people and t have that trust for myself, but it helped me really align with so my So tell creator. us about the book, so for people that don't know. So for folks that don't know, The Alchemist was really a book about a journey about this young man who was really trying to become, uh, like most of us, wealthy, rich, whatever you want it. And he went on, in, in a sense, on this quest. Uh, and he wanted to get married to this one girl, so he needed to get rich in order to do it, in his mind. And at the end of the whole thing of the journey, he realized he, what he was looking for was within him the entire time. Yeah. yeah. Let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> if, if you haven't read The Alchemist, I strongly urge you guys to read that book. But he was in search for this gold. And as he got to the pyramids where he thought the gold was, what he found out is, is at the very beginning of his journey where he really was. How many times do we seek out the gold and finding out that, dude, that gold was sitting right next to you at home. It was right in front of you. And then we go on this quest and he realized what's more important than the gold was actually his journey and his experiences. And so as I've gone on my quest in, in my life, I've stepped away from, I'm not the branding mentor, I'm the branding alchemist. My goal is to help find within you what is already in you. You have these incredible experiences that you've been through. And I sit there and I listen to them. I ask questions and I understand them. And I ask you more questions. And I just show you what is already there. And you already have it within you. We just got to change that frame. We just got to change the lenses of what we're looking at. Because you could create a lot of evidence of why you can't do this. But you could also create a lot of evidence in your life of why you could be doing so many more incredible things than you already are. And I was listening to a, a conversation with Joe Rogan and Adam Sandler. And Adam Sandler said, my secret was I just had this delusional confidence in myself. It was delusional. Okay, And some of you beat yourself up and I have to come in and I have to protect you from yourself. I was like, dude, you got to be a little bit fair for yourself because if you're going to talk about why you can't do something, you also have to talk about why you can do something. And we got to raise that bar a little bit higher. And so that's what I do. I help people see the frame and I've watched miracles. I've watched people like Ryan Sandstrom create like, I don't even know, 10 million. I don't even know what track. I can't, every, I can't even keep track how much millions he's made in his business over the three years. Okay, people closing $24,000 after having a 30-minute conversation with me. Clients making $16,000 their first month in coaching, $70,000 their first event. I mean, I could just go on and on, and all I really help them is just, let's change the frame, and it's already in you. Okay, and I would say you have that, and Brand X, through all these speakers and people you're going to listen to, they're going to help you bring it out within you. Okay, they're going to help you find that. Okay, so I want you to turn to your neighbor right now and said, we're going to find that.
Okay, and you know, and, and let's back up a second. Before, you know, before I'm the speaker, speaker, the alchemist, or whatever you want to refer to me as, I'm a dad. I'm an uncle. I'm a brother. I'm a friend. I'm a partner. I'm a team member. I'm a leader. And even before any of those things, the thing that I find myself that I got to get way better at, I got to be a better follower. I got to be a way better follower. I got to listen better. I got to understand better. I got to seek out more. I got to ask more questions. And before, where's all my dads in the room right now? I was so scared to be a dad. I look at these shoes. I was like, holy shit. This thing's coming. Am I really ready to be a leader? And I think that's the question we kind of ask ourselves in the back of the mind. Am I really ready to be the next leader that I need to be in the next part of my life? And what I've realized is that I don't need to be a better leader. I need to understand my son more. What is he saying? What is he trying to tell? I need to get down to his level. What does he see in the world? I need to connect with his eyes. I need to help him make decisions, not tell him everything to fucking do all the time. Because what is he going to do without his dad? He has to make decisions. Okay, and here's what I would say. Like, my vision for Brand X is to help empower you. And let me, rem and what I have understood the most in my journey of being a follower, okay, is I am so loved, and you are so loved too. Oftentimes we need more reminding than we do need to learn more. And so a lot of you come here to learn more, and that's great, and you will, but most of the time I would say you just need more reminding. And to even go deeper on that, we need reminding of what we already know, but we just need a different way of explaining it, a different way of seeing it, just a different lens. And that's what this event will be. And this event for a few people in your room will absolutely transform your life. And I've seen it. I've seen miracles for those that believe in miracles. And this event could do absolutely nothing for you because of the lens. And so I want to remind you of something very important. You are so loved. Like people love you. They really, really care about you. They want to see you win. They want to see you succeed. And for the people that have haters in here, they just feel left behind sometimes. Fuck the trolls, they could go to hell. <laughs> okay, but the haters, they, they feel left out sometimes. So you're loved, you're light, and you can do so much more, and you know it, and that's why you're here today. Okay, can we get an applause to that one right there? Okay, and here's what I would say before we bring on, and I, I want to give you a lens of how to view these speakers today. We got some incredible speakers, guys. I vetted out all these guys. They're amazing individuals. Was Sam amazing? Yeah, yeah Sam was amazing. So I'm really excited to learn myself, but there's essentially four different brand archetypes, okay? And I want to share each one of those. And as you listen to these speakers, you're going to say, ooh, that's this archetype. This is archetype. Maybe you might see this one themselves. So we got four different archetypes, okay? So the first one is our lover. Okay, our lover wants to know why. Why am I doing this? They make decisions based upon how they feel. A lover can walk into the room and they can instantly connect with anyone. They can make friends. They can walk out with 20 different numbers, connecting to 30 different people on Instagram. Okay, and then we got our magicians. Our magicians are our analytical people. Okay, the lovers want to know why. The magicians are like, Okay, I don't care about the why. I just want to know the way. Like, what's the way we actually do this? You talked about fitness. You talked about finances. You talked about finance and freedom. But what's the way you actually do this? They're very analytical. 
okay? And they're going to make decisions based upon how they think. It has to make sense. But what I've noticed about magicians, they think so damn much, they figure out how to put processes in place so they don't have to think as much. I've noticed that. Don't make me think, okay? Warriors, these are your action takers. Okay, they make decisions based upon who do I need to become. Doesn't matter about the process if I'm not actually going to actually do the process. Okay, who do I need to become? Who do I need to team up with? Who's going to be fighting beside me? Okay, and the warriors, they make decisions based upon what needs done. It doesn't matter how you feel. It doesn't matter how you think. It matters, does it need done or not? Okay, that's what we do. And then lastly, it was we got our kings and we got our queens. Okay, they want to know what's the result. Okay, what are we actually going after? Is the juice worth the squeeze here? Okay, and they make decisions based around how they want to be. And If there's one archetype I think we need to embrace more than any other out of these archetypes, it's that king and queen. You want to be happy. You want to be fulfilled. You want to be present. You want to be satisfied. You want to be at peace. Then we have to start making decisions from the king's perspective. Okay? Because life can be so sweet. Life can be so amazing. Okay, there's so much out there. Okay, but there's a couple of bees that don't make honey. You know what kind of bees don't make honey? Used to bees. They don't make honey. Okay, I don't care about what you used to do or whatever else. It's about right now. Used to bees don't make honey. Wannabes don't make honey. Okay, some people... Their outfit is wearing them. They're not wearing their outfit. Okay? And then crybabies. Those are the three types of bees that don't make honey. Used to bees, wannabes, and crybabies. Okay? I want you to get so much honey in your life. Turn to your neighbor and say, go get that honey. (laughs) Now turn to your neighbor and say, he did not mean your celebrity crush. Okay, 